everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I decided to start a new series on how I use social media to communicate science. This series isn't just for people who want to communicate specifically science, but everyday subjects that aren't usually accessible to the general public. I've been communicating science now for just under two years and I use a variety of different social media platforms to do this. Over this time I've got a really good following of non-scientists and scientists and I'm also in a great community of other communicators and we all come together to share each other's work and that is a really really great thing to be a part of. So this first video is going to be on some tips for if you are just starting out with your communication adventures using social media. Even though I've been communicating science in this way for a few years now, it took me a long time to get started. I started my PhD in September 2016, but it took me almost two years until I actually started my Instagram page. And this was for a few different reasons. The first was because I thought no one would like the content that I posted. The second was because when I went to start my account, I saw there were some other science communicators out there already who were posting about neuroscience, the brain, like my subject area. So I thought that my voice wasn't really needed. And finally, I wanted everything to be completely perfect before I started posting. Now, as a new science communicator or a general communicator, or if you haven't even started communicating yet, if you are feeling any of these things, please stop now. Firstly, if you enjoy making and creating your content, then post it. Don't be posting things thinking, oh, I don't think people will like this, so I'm not gonna post it. If you don't start posting, you will never get to know if people would like it or if they don't. And as you post, it's very likely that your posting style will evolve anyway. I am very thankful that I started to post because a lot of people like what I do. And the only regret I really have is not starting to post sooner. Secondly, your voice is valid and unique. Your experience is different to every other researcher in your field, in any field. And that's what I think is a really great thing to bring to the communication side of things. Your voice may resonate with some people far better than anyone else's voice that is already out there. Like, do your family and friends already know a science communicator? I know that none of mine did. So for me, communicating science opened that door up to all of these people who weren't able to access this type of material before. So you can bring something completely new and completely different to the communication of your research field on social media. And finally, nothing is ever going to be perfect. My account now still isn't perfect and it's been a long time. So do not let your perfectionism hold you back. As you post, your style will evolve, your brand will probably change, that is fine. That is what all businesses do. They update with time. So don't be thinking I need this perfectly branded account to start your communication. Just start and evolve as you go. But there are a few things that I would consider asking yourself before you start communicating academic work on social media. The first thing is, what is your mission? Mission sounds, you know, a bit, I don't even know what the word is. Mission maybe sounds a little bit dramatic, but essentially you want to ask yourself, why are you doing this? What are you hoping to achieve? This could be you want to make people more aware of your specific research, so your projects that you're doing right now, or it could be to open up your general subject area, say for me, that would be neuroscience or science to the general public. Or it could be something completely different. It might be that you want a career in journalism or you want to go into public policy and using these platforms, you want to communicate your research as a portfolio for future job prospects. All these reasons are completely valid. All of these are very valid missions, but I would say having this in your mind before you start your account or in the very early days of having your account will be really, really important for tailoring all of your content. The next thing you really need to consider is who you want your audience to be. Once you have your mission, so why you are doing your communication work on social media, you then need to consider who the audience is going to be for that communication work. So are you going to be talking to other academics or people who want to enter your field like younger students? Or you could be doing your communication for the general public who don't have as much knowledge on your subject area. Your audience, whoever they are, should always be in your mind when you are planning and creating content because they will determine how you pitch your work. And the final thing that I would say is good to have in mind before you start off using social media 
to communicate your research or subject area is how you want to communicate. Now you have your why and you know who your target audience are, you should decide how you are going to get your content to them. This could be in the form of blog posts, it could be in the form of art, it could be in the form of videos. I think the style of your content really depends on what you feel most comfortable doing and also what your audience will be most receptive to. And if you have looked at any other communicators on social media, you will know there is absolutely no limit to how you can communicate your work. There are some people who use really cool arts and crafts like stitching to communicate science. There are also like meme accounts and people who use little Lego figures to set up scientific scenes. And then there are really detailed extensive blogs. So any style that you want to use to communicate, whether that already exists or you want to make it up yourself, that is fine. But I think when you start your account, if you have that sort of style in your mind already, it makes things a lot easier and you can really channel your energy and focus into communicating your work in that specific way. So if you are a beginner to communicating your research using social media, the three questions you should answer are, what is your mission? Who are your audience? And how do you want to communicate? And once you have these three things in your mind, I think you're like good to go and you should just post that first post, do it today. Play around, engage with others, experiment with your posts and get to know others in your network. There really are some other amazing communicators out there who are super welcoming and will want you and your voice heard. I will be posting more videos on science communication tips and tricks like how to get a network of followers on your social media, how to make engaging content, how to use different social media platforms to communicate your work and many, many more things. So subscribe to the channel if you are interested in hearing the science communication hacks and you can follow me on any of my social medias as well if you wanna ask me any questions or if you want me to answer some of your biggest queries about using social media to communicate your research. See you next time.